Hello and welcome to another episode. This week I'm going to give you three great techniques to remove anything from your landscape photographs. So the inspiration for this week came from uh, having the very great pleasure of uh, attending a workshop by uh, Charlie Waite and Sam Gregory. Obviously Charlie needs no introduction, uh, Sam Gregory, I love his stuff, there's a, a link below. Uh, we went out in Dorset and um, photographed um, what I'd call sort of uh, light and geometry in the landscape. Not something I'd usually do but I, I came away with a photo that I really like um, but it's got some issues and uh, this week is all about uh, fixing those issues in Lightroom and Photoshop. So today we'll be covering three techniques and the timestamps for the different techniques are in the notes below. Uh, so firstly we'll be covering the uh, spot removal uh, tool in Lightroom which most of you probably uh, will know about but we'll have a look at that and we'll see what uh, that is most suitable for uh, using on. Secondly uh, I'll be talking about the um, content aware fill uh, and that's a Photoshop tool, so we'll be showing you what uh, I use that for. And then lastly is the clone stamp tool, which is possibly the most flexible of them all. Again, that's a Photoshop tool and uh, I'll be talking you through how to use that. Okay, so let's move to the computer and I'll show you the images and we'll get started. Okay, so we're in Lightroom now and uh, so this is the image on the right, the finished image. Uh, and this is the one we started with uh, on the left and uh, I guess what I want to point out to you is the defects that I see in this image and uh, so what we've got here is we've got this big scar on the ground here uh, we've got uh, marks here which are uh, obviously caused by a tractor and if you zoom in uh, what you can see is uh, some electricity lines uh, going across. So, and and actually, you know, when I, now I think of it, <laughs> you've got these crows uh, down here, and I don't tend to like wildlife in my pictures uh, unless uh, it's a conscious uh, choice of the composition I'm looking for. Okay, so let's start with um, the first technique, uh, which I said was spot removal. Uh, we do that in Lightroom, and it, it, you know it's very, very straightforward um, to do. Uh, we'll cover up a couple of things you may not know um, today. So, if you click the spot removal tool up here, uh, and what I'm just going to do with it is get rid of these troublesome crows. Uh, so I'm going to zoom in and you make your spot removal tool uh, bigger or smaller with the square brackets on the keyboard and essentially just click on the things you want to remove. Now what you can possibly see there is that because my feather up here is set quite high you can actually still see a vague outline of that crow and if I move it even further across it almost comes, it comes back. So what you want to do is make sure your feather just removes that I guess that's sort of quite funny because <laughs> it's we're talking about crows and feathers. But there you go, uh, and that one. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, and there's only more. So there's one up here. Mm, not sure about that. So one of the things you can do is you can um, press the forward um, slash key, uh, and it just moves where it's selecting uh, that replacement from. Okay, so that might be better. My crows are gone. Um, but what I did want to show you, and I'll, I'll just jump out to a different uh, image, is that this is easy to see because we're spotting crows in a field, but the spot removal tool is, is most often used to remove sensor spots and dust spots from your lens uh, on the camera. So um, if I look at this image, and so what we'll see here is at this, at this view it's quite difficult to see uh, where those sensor spots are. They're difficult to see on the screen but I can assure you when you print um, they'll stand out like a mile. So you can zoom in and uh, we'll find some. So there's one, there's another one. Um, but as I say it's quite difficult to see. So we zoom back out and click on the spot removal tool uh, and then go on this little button down here so visualize spots what it'll do is actually show you everything it thinks is a spot on your image. So all of these ones up here. Now do be careful, um, this here is a boy. 
uh, in the water. Um, so turn that off, you can see, and you might choose to remove that anyway, but uh, so just be careful and don't just go through and remove all of them. But th I think the thing to note with the spot removal tool is it's, it's quite good for doing those very small um, details uh, that are in, you know, uh, non-distinct backgrounds. Um, but, you know, it's not great uh, for uh, the larger, more complex stuff, which is, is where we use the other tools. Okay, so we're back with our image and the next thing I'd like to get rid of is this horrible scar in the ground. Uh, spot removal tool might be able to do it, uh, but a better tool for doing that sort of thing is uh, the content aware fill and for that we need to jump into Photoshop. So edit in Photoshop. Okay, so we've got our image in Photoshop now and uh, how we do the content aware fill isn't completely obvious, but we'll take you through it. So the first thing we need to do is get the lasso tool, which is up here. Uh, and I'm just gonna make this a bit bigger. And we're just gonna draw around this. Doesn't have to be perfect because um, the ground's fairly indistinct. So. We've drawn around that and counterintuitively you go to edit and content aware fill. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna sample everywhere in this green area uh, and, and use that uh, in order to try and work out what should go in that area that you cut out as it were. And you can see on the right here, uh, it's done actually a pretty good job. So we don't really need to uh, change anything on here, but um, just uh, just talk a little bit about the tool. Um, so up here, if you click on the paintbrush, uh, you can click plus minus on here uh, and just paint away some of this because um, actually, you know, this is completely different texture uh, than the area we want it to sample. So we just paint that away uh, and then it will resample uh, so it's redrawn in there and you know as I say it doesn't make any difference here at all just because of the indistinctness of the surface to start with but if we uh, actually missed a bit from here we could go back to lasso tool up here and you can see it's got a plus against it that means we could draw around a bit and add a bit into it and so it'd fill that bit as well or if you press the E key it goes to minus and we can take that bit out again. Uh, so, you know, you can change change the area if you do make a mistake in here in terms of the sampling. Uh, and uh, another thing to just cover is you've got a couple of things up here uh, which we won't have to alter anything for this image. So color adaptation, that um, essentially, um, if this was a very graded color scheme, you know, from, from blue to yellow down here. Um, if we selected that, uh, the options in there might uh, make that look a little better. The rotation adaption is if you are substituting uh, circular elements in your image. And again, those things, you know, you have to play with and, and work out the best way to do it. But here, it looks completely fine to me. So now we just click OK and uh, what that's done is it's put another layer in our image uh, with just some substituted ground and if we zoom out there uh, you know we're pretty much not going to know that was ever there so the last major element i, I want to cover is uh, removing the overhead wires here which go all the way across the image uh, and these tire marks up here uh, and where you've got something that's traversing uh, you know the whole of the image using the content aware fill would probably struggle with that and so the clone stamp tool is is what I would choose to use for those kinds of things it's you know probably the most flexible of these techniques because uh, you control exactly uh, what you're substituting with what, but we'll, we'll, we'll look at that now. Okay, so what I've done is you've got the background layer, which is the original. Um, the remove scar is the area down here where we took away this, and so you can see, turn it on, turn it off. That's gone. And then up here is our wires, and I've created a new copy of the background layer, and uh, we're gonna use clone stamp, as I say, to remove these wires. So. Press S to get clone stamp um, and you can control your brush again with the 
square brackets. Uh, um, essentially what you do is you press option uh, on the Mac or um, alt on the PC and you sample a bit of ground. So sample here and then we paint that here to remove those wires. And as you see, you've got to be quite careful because it's it's a relative uh, position that you're taking uh, when you paint. So if where you're taking the paint from has got something you don't want on, then it will paint that on as well. So you just need to watch really. And I won't do all of that um, now, but I will just jump over here. Uh, you've got a tricky area here because you're co you are um, going across uh, some uh, fencing here so you've got lines going both ways and different texture underneath but really the uh, technique is the same uh, we just zoom in and, and really what you need to do is just get a very small brush zoomed in uh, and sample here paint and you know you, you can spend as little or as long on this as you want you know where you've got a bit there where the uh, pole uh, is crossed by the wire if you actually select the pole and just paint that in you know it, that's gone now and you wouldn't see it so you know you can carry on uh, doing that all of the way across and like I say I won't do it now um, but that that's the, the technique and it, it you know it's very flexible and actually surprisingly um, easy you know just what you want to watch for is if you paint in something um, that's a repetition of something else uh, in the landscape uh, it can look very obvious so if I paint this then it could look very obvious that that there and that there are the same so if you do that then just select a different piece to paint from and just paint that out and just carry on across uh, and then we've got this area up here uh, and again the clone stamp tool is very good for this where you've got a geometric pattern and something crossing it. So what you do is select an edge here and just start painting into here and just be careful and gone. So and that's, that, that's it, I mean that, that uh, is three techniques that allow you to remove pretty much uh, anything unless you get you know some really tricky uh, scenarios but in landscape images like this uh, you know that can turn something that's unusable into something that you know it may not be going into my portfolio but certainly I'm extremely happy with it. So I hope those t hints and tips were useful to you. Um, as I say from before, if you're interested in my photo tours, take a look at my website. If you've got any comments or questions about anything we've covered today, put a comment below. And please subscribe uh, so you can see me next time. Bye.